A little over one year ago, I did a review on the Nike Street Gato, a boot I claim to be the best indoor on the market, and it just so happens to be my best video to date. And now I'm back a year later with the same boot with a one year review. For $85, the last year, this boot has given me more than a bang for my buck. I've worn it in futsal games, turf games, six aside, coaching, refing, anything you can imagine that you can do with a football boot. I have done with these. And so we're gonna get right into this review. Starting off strong with the outsole, this probably has to be one of the best performing outsoles I have worn for an indoor boot or for just flats in general. I was originally wearing this boot on a court that our club was playing at at the time for practice. It was just a community center. It was not really well taken care of and the court was always slippery. So any boot I had, I was just all over the place, put these on no issue whatsoever. Now, 80% of the time I was wearing this boot on a six aside pitch or pitches just wherever I was playing. And this is my go-to small sided boot. So that's why now I don't have a lot of futsal to play and not a lot of pickup either on concrete. So you can see how it's kind of already worn flat here and on the edges. And that's mostly just from the last time I shot the B-roll with these for this new video. It just concrete shreds them. Concrete's basically like sandpaper and it destroys indoor boots. It destroys turf boots. You can get only so much and it's not a manufacturer's fault that's just what happens now it doesn't happen as quickly on a court for futsal but it does over time start to eat away at the boot so if you wear them on small sided like a lot of places are starting to require flats or turfs you're going to really be able to wear these for a long long time to put in perspective this is my pair i ref with now i had them before i got this main pair but i just wear the main pair now. So these go to refing only, and they used to be all white, and now they're mostly gray and disgusting. But even though I've had these longer and probably worn them about the same amount of time, if you include refing hours, they're not nearly as worn down. So the second you put them on concrete there, gone. For the upper, besides the fact that my beautiful indigo colorway is now starting to look disgusting from turf and dirt and grime, the upper held up very well considering how often I wore these over the last year. It has a nice textile upper here and on the tongue it's the same exact material and then once you hit the bottom half in the toe box area this is all going to be suede. Now the suede is not as soft or kind of palpable as it was when it was brand new, like it's been used as covered in grime, it's a little disgusting, but it's still holding very well. And even these sections here, which are high contact areas that are reinforced, they're doing really, really well. Even though you can definitely tell there's some wear and tear on them, there's no real signs of this boot disintegrating. I do like the feeling that the plush textile upper gives, especially the tongue, and it makes them more comfortable. Now, these boots do feel a little bit bulky, but nothing crazy. It's nothing like a Copa Mundial team or a Samba or anything like that, but it's also not as thin as a Mercurial Indoor, an X Indoor, or like a Speed Boot Indoor. But I don't really think that's something that's gonna get in the way when you're wearing these. As for size and fit, I went with a 9 US. It's the same size I bought for the first pair and the other three. It fits me perfect. Whatever your Nike size is, I highly recommend you get for these boots. And if you're worried about the width, I wouldn't too much after about 15, 20 minutes. That's when I really felt this boot starts to stretch out. And if you have narrow feet, I still think it's a really good length width wise for narrow feet. Unless you have super, super narrow feet, then you might struggle a little bit, but I don't. So I can't tell you that for sure. But otherwise, any foot shape that I'm aware of, besides super skinny feet, should fit just fine. Typically, you don't wear the same pair of boots for over a year if they're not comfortable. And I can confirm that these are still the most comfortable indoor that I've tested to date. And I don't think there's a boot that's come close besides the Adidas Messi Freestyle 24 or whatever that boot's name is. It's similar, but it's just not quite this boot. And maybe it's a recency bias, but this is a boot that I would wear over almost any single indoor boot that's ever been created. Now, it's kind of hard for me to talk about the comfort back when I first got them because I don't remember it, but over the last year, this boot has molded to my foot, which is great. It also has a suede inside and lining, which is also pretty comfortable. There's no padding in the heel. It's just slightly plush overall, and it's just kind of a perfect recipe for a boot that's going to end up molding to your foot. And even the heel up top is collapsible. I've never gotten blisters from any of the four pairs that I've worn. And it's, it's just a, 
really, really good football boot. I don't know if I'll be able to do another one year review on a pair of indoor boots when I have this pair specifically available to me, even if it's a brand new pair, because I already know how these feel. I haven't worn another pair of indoor boots that I think I could wear long-term or that I want to wear long-term. I mean, maybe in the, in the future, I'll be testing a lot of indoor boots, especially in the next six months, and I'll find a pair that, hey, I really like these more than the Street Gato, but I, I really can't see that happening. So maybe, but I doubt it. As for lockdown, I had no real issues with this boot on any surface besides a wet six aside pitch. And yeah, at that point, you're gonna want turf boots or even AG boots if it's nice enough. So there's really nothing I can do there. But concrete, these are great, other than getting eaten up by the concrete court. Decent as well. Even the super slick court that my club was training on, once I put these street gatos on, no sliding at all from anybody who wore these as well. So that's a good testament there. And then again, on turf. I don't think I've ever slipped on these on a regular turf pitch, unless it was outside raining, like I said earlier. So that's great. And the only issue with the lockdown, I would say, is I have a little bit of tongue slippage, but even then, um, it didn't really feel like it affected the lockdown at all. I wasn't sure where to put this on the review, but I did actually snap a lace, and I still have the original one on my left boot, but the right boot, it's snapped, it's gone. It's boom forever, right? And I don't know why that is. I don't really have that happen to me on outdoor boots at all, but indoor boots, I've had several pairs over the last 10 years, way before I was even doing boot reviews where the laces would snap on me. So I don't know why that is. I think maybe it has something to do with the kind of friction. So if I pull this close here, the top of this lace is what's starting to rip. Maybe that's why, but I also don't have any signs of the left lace ripping yet. But my friends who have street got those who I played futsal with, I'm pretty sure have had a couple laces snap on them. It's not the biggest deal. It's probably, in fact, the cheapest fix for a pair of football boots, especially if you have, you know, maybe not this many, but spare pairs of boots lying around, you can take a lace from them. Now for durability, this whole review is basically a durability review. I've tried not to make it like that, but it, let's be let's be real here. It is, I mean, it's, I've had these for one year. I wanted to show you how they've held up for one year, but they've held up really well. There's no signs of sole separation. There's really only five or six stitches frayed on the entire boot for each boot, maybe a couple more, but out of a thousand stitches, a couple is not that big of a deal at all, I promise you. You know, again, depending on how much you wear them on concrete, turf, anything like that is gonna determine how, how much this portion of the boot wears, but I'm gonna tell you this upper will outlive the outsole 100%, at least as far as I've seen. And not that it's cheaper, but if you loved an upper so much you wanted to keep it, but just switch an outsole out, I guarantee you this upper would probably last two or three outsoles at least. And other than that, I mean, I pretty much covered everything about this boot in terms of durability. You know, all the stitching's pretty much still good. The only real thing that had a problem was the laces. And again, that's an easy fix. Now, if you're someone who has to have matching laces, then maybe it's gonna irritate you. And, and I get that. I'm not trying to shame you there or make fun of you. I, I would understand that. But for 99% of us, the easiest fix is what's actually wrong and breaking on the boots. So that's perfect. I'll take that any day of the week. Now, the total amount of times I've worn these boots, I think is around 40 to 50. It could be more, could be less. I wanna say the hours are anywhere from 100 to 300. I just don't have an actual way to calculate that exactly. But it's a long time and that's pretty impressive considering I think I've reviewed five or six pairs of indoor boots in that time and another probably 30, 25, 30 pairs of FG boots as well. So still being able to wear these while reviewing boots is in my opinion, pretty impressive for the amount of time that I actually wear these boots before I review, just in general. So again, long story short, very, very durable. This whole video is a durability review. Overall, you already know what I'm gonna say, this boot is fantastic, it's amazing, it's durable. I think every footballer should have a pair of these. They're just, so good, I think it's something you can have in your bag and think of it like a multi-tool. If you wanna play on court, boom, you got it. If you wanna play futsal, boom, you got it. If you wanna play small-sided, boom, you got it. Would I recommend you wear these during 11s? Probably not, I think 11s is something you at least need a turf boot or FG boots or studs or something, whatever you're gonna be wearing, but you could even do that. I've seen it done before, so 
It's just a multi-tool, it's great for your bag. It'll last you a very long time for $85. That's more than a bargain. And you know what? I'll tell you guys a little secret where I get a lot of my older stuff and where I used to pick up some inventory is eBay. And that might sound crazy, but these are 85 to $90 boots. And I promise you, you'll be able to find some pairs in your size for probably 40, 50. Maybe it's not the greatest colorway, but if we're talking about a fantastic boot that will last you a long time, you might wanna negate the color a little bit and pick up this boot for that good of a deal. So that was my one year review on the Nike Street Gato. If you like this video, football boot facts, other reviews, or just curious about football related things, make sure to check out my channel, subscribe and like. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.